the board. I'm just so sorry. I'm right now. All right. So we're going to call this meeting to order for Monday, December 16th. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Here. Dr. Rohr. Here. Mr. Schroyer. Here. Megan Sparks. Here. Andy Self. Here. Mr. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. America. We have a, a, a very special presentation, uh, but before we get into the presentation, um, like many great teams, Central City Schools has a number of great teams inside the organization, and one of our fantastic teams uh, is our Treasurer's Office staff, so all of them are here tonight. I'd like to ask them to come up and maybe stand up here <laughs> behind me at the podium. They will no. do that for me, please, so come on up, folks. <laughs> So these fantastic uh, ladies do a great job up in the treasurer's office, and uh, they're part of a great team. Unfortunately, this uh, past September, we lost a great team member, um, Mitch Biederman, our treasurer. And tonight, uh, we have Carl Keith, the uh, Montgomery County Auditor, who's going to make a special presentation. And we have Mitch's wife, Lisa Biederman. So Lisa, if you'd come up also, we'd appreciate that too. So Mr. Carl Keith. <laughs> And uh, thank you, uh, members of the school board. I'm so happy to be here with you this evening. And, and uh, I will say, you know, it's a, the weather's a little dicey out there. Yes. Uh, I was at an event before I came here with the county tra the county uh, engineer. And the county engineer tells you to be careful out there. You know, you better, you know, you're in trouble, right? Um, I want to talk just for a moment about uh, a man by the name of Jesse Haynes, or some people call him Jess Haynes. Uh, some people call him Pop Haynes, also known as Pop Haynes. Uh, Jess Haynes was uh, born in Montgomery County, grew up in, in Phillipsburg, and uh, became a Major League Baseball pitcher, uh, pitched for the St. Louis Cardinals, uh, had the distinction of pitching in, in a number of World Series games. He had the distinction of pitching against the uh, New York Yankees in the 20s, and uh, did on occasion strike out Babe Ruth. Um, and he became a Hall of Famer, a Hall of Fame baseball player. Uh, and then when he retired, he moved back to uh, Montgomery County and ran for the office of County Auditor. Uh, I don't know, Major League Baseball player, Hall of Famer, County Auditor, I think all goes together, doesn't it? Something, something like that. He had the distinction, and has the distinction of being the longest serving County Auditor in Montgomery County history. He served as County Auditor for 28 years. And of course, over the course of 28 years, he saw a lot of changes and a lot of uh, changes in technology and law and, and growth in the county. Uh, so a few years ago, we decided in the auditor's office to name an award uh, after uh, Jess Haynes. We call it the Jess Haynes Award. And we present this each year to a, a finance official in the county who uh, has been nominated by one of his peers and who exemplifies uh, integrity and hard work and uh, it helps to recognize the, the tireless efforts and work, the behind the scenes work uh, that the folks in, in working in, in finance and in our organizations do each year. Uh, we presented this award, announced the presentation of this award on Friday at our annual update meeting uh, with local officials. And uh, this year, one of the recipients of our award was Mitch Biederman. And so it's, again, a, I, you know, I don't need to tell you all what a, what a great person Mitch was and how, uh, many years that he worked for both in, in Centerville and other school districts as well and what a great job that he did. I know in our dealings with him in the auditor's office uh, he was always the, the ultimate professional and, and he was a pleasure to work with. He was uh, he had lots of energy 
had lots of energy. Uh, so he, he kept us on our toes at times. He kept us on our toes at times. Uh, but uh, it was a real loss. Um, but on the other hand, we were, I think, so fortunate to have known him and so fortunate to have to, uh, have been able to have his, experience his leadership and his dedication to, to uh, local government finance. And so I'm very happy to be here this evening. Thank you for inviting me. And I'd like to present to Lisa this uh, plaque uh, for the recognizing Mitch. It's the winner of the Jesse Haynes Award. In the Next, um, I have the honor of presenting uh, uh, the next award. I'd like uh, a president of our Board of Education, Mrs. Annie Self, to come up here. Maybe to stand to my right if she would. First of all, it has always been kind of a custom or a tradition for us here in Centerville City Schools. Um, when a person has served their first term as board president, we always get them a commemorative gavel that they can then take and, and keep this in uh, memory of the first year that they've been a board president. So we have an uh, engraving on this gavel that we're going to give to Annie tonight for being president of the Board of Education and it also has the dates that she served as a board member for the last four years. So first of all, I'd like to give this to you and congratulate you on for that. Thank you. So thank you. Again, we want to thank you for your um, years of service and leadership as being board of the president or president of the board of education, um, and again, um, I always like to share with individuals and the uh, public that uh, board members and especially board presidents spend a lot of time behind the scenes, uh, taking questions and uh, dealing with different issues and, and working with the, the school district and spending numerous hours that that people don't see that they're involved with. So we appreciate your leadership this year and everything that that you did. The second thing I'd like to give you is this is from the entire staff and students of Centerville City Schools. We hope that uh, we know you're relocating and we hope that you'll be able to use that down the road to um, help uh, enjoy some time with your family and your husband and everything like that. So again, we appreciate your leadership and uh, your tenure as a board member and we thank you very much. So. And so I do have a little bit of a speech. It's not nearly as long as the graduation speech I delivered, but I think it'd be better if I waited till the end because um, I'm gonna fall apart. So it'd be better if I keep it together for the meeting and then I'll read my little speech to you for goodbye. Thank you so much. Hey, honey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the board, the board also would like you to present you a little something. <laughs> I gotta get that heart beating. So this is from the board. Um, you know, spe speaking from the board's perspective, Annie's obviously been four years now and uh, really has contributed a, a lot to this board, as, as every single one of the students out here knows. I mean, this was her idea to get the student reps on there. Uh, she's worked with them diligently over these years, and um, just just like Mitch, uh, Annie's very enthusiastic, and uh, we uh, we will miss you and, and um, just congratulations on the move. She's going to Charleston, South Carolina, which is great great city so <clears throat> we'll, we'll see her I get the, I have a place down there so I'm gonna get to see her a little bit more down there but uh, Andy thank you so much senior at Central High School. The um, uh, past couple of weeks we've been conducting canning comments at the middle schools for the first time ever. We went to Tower Heights and Magazine. We we're planning to go to Watts um, after the new year. Um, the major themes that we've seen from them um, go along with the high school. We've seen mental health um, come up at the middle schools. We've also seen dress code come up and school safety. So we're going to work with administration to make sure they're aware of all the concerns that we've seen. Uh, past over grades. 
So after meeting with Mrs. Westendorf and Mr. Carroll, we've decided to try to put together a, something to try and combat the issues that the middle schoolers have been seeing and try to improve on them so that they can be more happy and satisfied. Hello, I'm Mohammed Mustafa and I'm a sophomore. And recently we've been working on a book program initiative to supply low-income students with um, in class and summer reading books where at but where from before they were able to access <coughs> excuse me were able to access those books and we've been working close I've been working closely with Mrs. Self and um, Mrs. Mrs. Dole and from there we're gonna try to um, have some sort of recycle some sort of recycling uh, aspect to it where older kids kind of pass down their books and from there we're gonna uh, get it started. Thank you. Uh, we're trying to get a meeting with Mrs. McGuire, which will hopefully happen soon, as well as a meeting after the new year with the West Carrollton kids who are adding uh, student representatives to their board. And since we have some experience, we could, hear, we could help them out and make the transition go smoothly. Hello, I'm Madison Ernest, and I'm a senior here at uh, Centerville High School. And I've been working the past couple of months with um, Mrs. Self, Dr. Rohr, um, Mr. Carroll, and Mrs. Myers to develop a um, quick flow chart poster um, for students with any mental health issues so that they can quickly glance at all of the resources that our high school provides for them, um, what they can do for them, um, and two resources, the nurse and our um, hotline, uh, if they are in need of like a quick crisis like uh, resource. So, I'm very happy to announce that it is extremely close to being finished and post, posted around the school. Um, so a copy will be sent out soon. Thank you. Okay, so now it's time for our goodbye to our great board president. So we'll start off with the first gift, which we also got you a gavel, and we all signed it. So now you have two. So great. Yeah, yeah, you, yes, you come on over here. <laughs> You always need two gals in your life in case one wears out. <laughs> so we have a little gift basket. So we've had an ongoing joke this year that Miss Self um, has taken over the stereotype of a Visco girl. Um, so we have, to lighten the humor a little bit, we got her some scrunchies and a couple hydro flasks with some, some Starbucks to kind of lighten the mood, but now on a more like, loving note and thank you full note, me making a binder, because I love my binder. Uh, we all wrote thank you notes to Miss Self, all the past reps, we all wrote thank you notes, and they're all in this binder. We don't want to read them, because we'll all start tearing up. Um, there's also some memories, um, some big memories that took place last year, like we have the original um, board minutes from the West Carrollton meeting when we proposed our idea to the uh, with Carrollton board and we have some pictures from the state um, board presentation so from the bottom of my hearts and I know all the past reps we just want to thank you so much for everything all the opportunities you've given us and this school district for helping everyone and all your service thank you speech but I just have to say that it has been such a privilege to work with these students they are future leaders they are stakeholders of this district and they are so full of energy I can't keep up half the time and this basket is <laughs> they're still gonna have to explain to me what half the things mean in it so um, one of the things that I have seen these kids do from start to finish each year is that they grow and um, I can't take credit for that but it's just kind of a mama bear's pride to see how these kids have grown um, from the first group, it was, and Megan can attest to this, it was touch and go. We were trying to find our feet. We had great support. Mr. Carroll was super supportive as well, and he just kind of let us go with things. And um, leaps and bounds, they started Candy and Comments, and because of Candy and Comments, which I'll talk about a little bit later, there's been so many amazing things that have happened. And I'm sorry, had I known that Megan and Julia would be here, 
but because of our crazy candy and comments this year, it's been a little wacky. Um, my favorite was presented to me today that said, we need more naps with pillows and blankets, <laughs> which was for middle schoolers, which I thought, you already get to start school later in the day. So, um, so I'm always harping to them when we meet, and I meet them for lunch. Um, Julia can attest to this. I was always asking, so what's in your lunch? What are you eating today? And um, so there's a candy and a comment that you get some candy and a gift card from Tropical Smoothies. So you can I need to give um, hats off to Ben Campbell, who's not here this evening. Um, I spoke about it at the work session that Ben created a mental health analysis for students for the district that he is going to present. I spoke to Mr. Carroll about it a while ago, and um, he did a really good job. He's insightful. He's way smarter than I am, for sure. I had to read it three times. Um, it, it just is really amazing what these kids are capable of doing. So I thank you so much for supporting them, and I'm gonna turn them over to you, and I'm gonna keep in touch, and hopefully see them continue to grow by leaps and bounds. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. tonight um, you heard mr. Keith mentioned the, the Friday uh, meeting with the auditor's office update so I have just a few stats that I'm just going to verbally give to you um, as I said this meeting was just on Friday um, in January I'm going to probably put something more formal together in terms of some and then be more center uh, specific um, part of the report talked about the tornado damage throughout the county there were 4434 damaged parcels throughout the county and that totaled over $46 million in lost property value throughout the county just from uh, that one event. Uh, one, another item that was uh, notable is the new construction. There's $38 million of residential uh, construction just in Washington Township alone. Um, Washington Township and our district had 54% of all the new residential construction in the area in the last year so far. That was, that was definitely a highlight. Uh, property values for 2020 has increased by 1%. That's pretty typical for a year that's not a reappraisal or a triennial update. And so there was a 1% increase countywide and Centerville also saw a 1% increase as well. Um, next year, 2020 is a reappraisal year. Uh, I'm expecting based on home sales uh, for it to be very large. I know Miami County was 16% uh, in terms of uh, an update. Many of the surrounding counties were in double digits, 10 and 12, 11% uh, in the surrounding areas. And so they're out assessing properties now um, and, and finalizing some of that data that'll be, uh, people will be receiving their updates come spring and in the, into the early summer. So there will be probably a pretty significant uh, increase in property values for 2020. So that's uh, it for tonight. I just wanted to mention a few of those highlights, and like I said, I'll put something uh, more detailed together for January. Thank you. And just, again, just to reemphasize, just because property values are going up, again, that does not mean the school is going to get any more money because of the rollback, correct? That's correct. So we may be paying more taxes because the assessed values are going up, but the school, because of the rollback, gets no more money. That's correct. So as you see your tax bills going up, it's not coming to us anymore. That's correct. Thank you. 
All right, we are going to, is that it? Are we good? All right, for Treasurer's recommendations, we're going to consider approving the November 2019 financial statements, the monthly financial report, the fund activity report, the appropriations report, general funding spending report, the general fund summary, general fund summary comparison. Purchase orders included in statement number seven approved by administration, then and now certified by the Treasurer and supported by the board resolution totaling. $175,689.95. So moved. Second. Second. All the roll, please. Mr. Dahl. Yes. Dr. Doerr. Yes. Mr. Schroeder. Yes. Megan Spark. Yes. Andy So. Yes. All right. On a side note, it's always funny to watch me and, um, say the numbers in the right order. All right. Consider a resolution to authorize a treasurer to request advance payment of taxes when available during 2020. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Dr. Roar? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Andy So? Yeah. Consider approving the minutes of the following Board of Education meeting, November 25th, 2019, uh, the regular meeting. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Dr. Roar? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Sparks? Yes. Andy So? Yes. And now we will have the superintendent's recommendations. Okay. All raised. Superintendent recommends accepting resignations as listed on Schedule A. The superintendent recommends the employment, change of employment status, or change of contract status for the certificate of personnel listed on Schedule B for the salaries, programs, and on the effective dates given. The superintendent recommends the employment or change of employment status for the support staff personnel listed on Schedule C for the salaries, programs, and on the effective dates given. The superintendent recommends the employment of the personnel listed on Schedules D and D1 for supplemental contracts or extra duty assignments. And the superintendent recommends a granting of leaves of absence for the personnel listed on Schedule B for the reasons and on the dates given. I move. Second. All roll, please. Mr. Dahl? Yes. Dr. Rohr? Yes. Mr. Schroyer? Yes. Megan Spark? Yes. Andy Sell? Yes. Um, before we go any further, <laughs> I just have something I want to share. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, for the record, as I mentioned, the reason um, four years now I've dressed up and I've put on mascara for all of these meetings, and tonight, as I was going through papers um, earlier this month, going through papers to get things ready to move, um, which has been really hard, I came across my flyer and I had a shirt on, so I thought, I started my term with this sweatshirt on and I'm going to end it. So I waited to the very end because I knew this was going to be hard. It's even harder because my Anna is out there. <laughs> Leading up to this week has been a little difficult because my journey of saying goodbye starts tonight. It will be one of many if I start the transition on my move. I've always wanted a farm, but I didn't think I'd be making so far out of the district to have one. I'm not one for goodbyes, and I tend to skirt out of them with a see you later. It's so hard to comprehend that four years has flown by so quickly. When Craig and I moved here almost 20 years ago, we chose Centerville because of the school district. I really wanted to move back to my hometown of Fairborn, but the schools were not in good shape. Never in a million years would I have ever thought that I would be representing the district as a Board of Education member, and it has been an honor. To be able to hand both of my kids their, their diplomas along with their friends, and even speak at Anna's graduation was an absolute thrill. Truly one of the highlights of the board member. I would have never even thought about being on the board had our beloved pediatrician <laughs> and family friend not prodded me along. You should run for the board, Dr. Orr would say when I would pop in with Josh or Anna for an appointment. We're just here because I have no prescriptive authority and the girl has a different infection. Besides, I'm fine as a parent volunteer, I would say. This went on for quite some time until they wore me down. After years as a room mom, PTO president, both at Weller and Tower, and just vol volunteering whenever the call was heated, whether it was a cross or band, whatever was needed, I, would, I finally said, okay, what do I need to do? Just go get some signatures, he said. There's a lot of oh signatures here. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did, and I ran my campaign on I'm a parent, not a politician, which was an accidental slogan when a snarky lady who I approached to ask if she would sign my page said, what are you gonna do for me? And I said, I'm just a parent, not a politician, and it stuck. Actually, I don't think any of us on the board can claim we're politicians. We are parents who care about our schools and community, and the two go hand in hand. After I was elect elected, I remember saying to Dr. Warren, now what? The first year is easy, he said, you just sit there and quietly take it all in. There's a lot to learn. Well, we all know that is funny, and I'm forever thankful to our beloved Mitch Biederman, who, inherits, who inherited each new member where he patiently would sit next to you and would whisper explanations to terms and various budget line items, etc. 
I'll be forever grateful when after I first met with Mitch, he added graphs and pie charts, which made it, which made so much more sense from a global perspective. Thanks to Mitch, thank you Mitch. I've been able to casually read up on the school district where I'll be moving to. I promise I'm not going to get involved, I'm just gonna be a spectator. But I'm, I was able to at least make a little bit of um, picture of what's going on with their money and it even did it without a pie chart. I have to give kudos to Dr. Henderson, as I'm sure he had no idea what he was getting with me. <laughs> I met with him after I was elected, and he very patiently answered all of my questions and didn't throw me out of his office. I remember saying, Dr. Henderson, who does the website? As a parent in this district, it's hard to navigate at times and seems to need a revamp. I'm totally paraphrasing, but he very calmly, in his Dr. Henderson-like fashion, said, I do. <laughs> I click, quickly rebounded with, but you're the superintendent, you're running the school district. All is well, it ends well, and Dr. Henderson is still doing a great job as a superintendent, and we have Sarah manning the website. I would be remiss if I didn't thank the most important people of this district, the teachers and staff who have daily contact with the students. As a parent of two children who attended Centerville City Schools from start to finish, let me say thank you. I was a room mom for many years, and that was not, there was not one time that I left a classroom and did not comment, there has got to be a chair in heaven for teachers. Get me an ER full of sick or traumatically injured kids and I'm your girl. 24 healthy kids in a classroom, no way, hands down, teachers are my heroes. To the administrative team, you are the behind the scenes team that keeps this train on the track, the steam behind the wheels. I love this, I love this district works cohesively and sets an example to other districts. If only, if only one rate of this district on test, test scores, then I would vehemently say you have no idea what goes into the functionality of a school district, and those test scores, scores are driven by people who are not educators, who make up the rules as they go along and should render the schools back to the district level. No, I'm not a politician. Remember, I'm just a parent, but I also am a staunch advocate for standing up for what is right. Hats off to all of you, and thank you for your patience with my questions and for always providing intricate answers. Mr. Wesney, thank you a million times over for helping the students with their Elks Going Green project to get the recycling containers up and running. And Mr. Yux, I will forever miss, hello Mr. Yux, and you would say, hello Mrs. Self. And now the hardest part. The Student Board of Ed Reps, you are truly my kids, and I cherish all three generations of you, but I must say, I think I've learned just as much from you as you did from me. I've enjoyed being your mentor, and as the stakeholders of your school district, you are doing wonderful things. When Elliot, Megan, and Siri started as the first reps, it was touch and go and we were finding our way. Candies and Comments was born during this time and it has continued to thrive. From information you have obtained, we have done many things. The creation of the Safety Hotline poster was a plus that came from the artwork of talented student Allie Fitzharris. Comments obtained from both high school and middle school regarding safety, bullying, and mental health have led to a variety of things. And don't forget, we've adopted the Sandy Hook Promise and the program with, with it starts with hello. To Madison's mental health crisis guideline and directing students on how to ask for help in an acute situation, you saw a task and you took it on. The district sees that mental health truly is a crisis and hiring mental health counselors a few years ago was a much needed addition to the guidance counselors. You continue to explore and advocate for your peers in making your school environment all that it can be. Presenting at the State Board of Ed meeting last May was certainly a highlight and you can be proud of how you're all viewed and respected. I was like a proud mama bear watching her cubs and you made Centerville proud. The list is endless and I challenge you to keep going. You are truly the leaders of our future and I see good things in each and every one of you. You truly are my kids and I'm going to miss you so much. I'm especially going to miss our round table discussions of laughter and hearing oh Mrs. Self with eyes rolling when you're in all the term I am not familiar with, such as this. <laughs> to the board, I thank you. I wish you the very best as the new year approaches and I know that there are many good things on the horizon.